Hey Amen. Let church say hey amen. Amen. Brent Barris wanted me to be corrected. I, I thought I had said it, but uh, he wanted to, me to be corrected that it was his brother that is suffering from cancer, and I thought that's what I said. If I didn't, I apologize, charge it to uh, my head and not to my heart. Amen, church. Amen. Are you happy this morning? In spite of, are you happy this morning? That may be an understatement, happy. Do you have joy this morning? Amen. Come on, church. I can't hear you. Is anybody in here going to talk to me? I have joy this morning in spite of. Amen. It may be some kinfolk laying in the hospital, but I have joy. Amen. It may be some kinfolk laying out at Trice Hill, but I still have joy. Amen. I might look in my pocket and not have a dime, but I still have joy this morning, church. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. And before you stand, I want to go ahead and I want to pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, it is once more and again, Father God, that you have allowed me to stand before your people and speak on what thus saith the word. Father God, I thank you this morning, Father God, for it was you who woke me this morning and started me on my way. You clothed me in my right mind. And here I stand in reasonable health and strength, and I just say thank you. Father God, I ask, Father God, that you just hide me behind the cross, that your word may go forth. Father God, I ask, Father God, that you just use me. Use me, Father God, as a weapon of your mighty power. Father God, I ask that the the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be holy and acceptable in thy sight. For you are my Lord and my Redeemer. You are my horn, my shield, my buckler, my high tower. And I cannot do anything without you, Father God. But I know with, all, with, with, with you, all things are possible. Father God, let me speak this morning that someone might come in and say, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Father God, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're about to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. Have your will this morning. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Uh, one thing I caught uh, while Rem Fontino was preaching, amen, he, he said that there is a question. And it's all right if you go ahead and stand to your feet. I'll be quick. Amen. And I do have a loaded question for you this morning, church. As we stand in the presence of God in the book of Matthew in the uh, 16th chapter, and I'm starting... Uh, with verse 24. Reading from the King James Version. Amen. You might have a different translation, thus your wording may be different. Same meaning, different wording. And it reads thusly, it says, Then Jesus said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man come after me. Y'all didn't hear that. He said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, here comes a question that's loaded. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of this holy and his mighty word. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the most high God. Amen. A loaded question. I just want to talk to you a little bit today about who will you follow? Who will you follow, church? And it's a loaded question, and I pose this, and you may say, uh, Reverend Zeke, what's a loaded question? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
See, a, a loaded question, I posed this to a friend once before, and he said, well, a loaded question is simply a question that does not have a right or a wrong answer. Right. And I said, I beg to differ. Hmm? Is anybody going to pray with me in there this morning? But a loaded question is a question that will have a direct impact on your life. Amen. In other words, in how you answer that question, it may determine your latitude and your longitude. It may determine on whether you go to hell or you go to heaven. All right. Come on, somebody, this morning. See, in our world today, brothers and sisters, amen, we have all kinds of technology. Amen. And we have Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and, and, and social networking and things of this nature. And, and people who do this and do it all the time, you see them here and there in supermarkets and even sometimes sitting in church. Twittering and Facebooking and doing other things and stuff like that because they want people to follow them. Like they've been deemed necessary to be followed. <laughs> Amen. So what does it mean to you this morning, church, to be a follower of Christ? Amen. Does that mean that I can attend to the things of the world? That I can tend to the things of the flesh? That I can simply do whatever I want to do and be a follower of Christ? Who will you follow this morning? Amen. If you're going to call yourself a disciple of Christ, church, amen, you must examine yourself. Amen. You must examine this text. Amen. And you must know and have the courage to be honest with yourself and say, am I following Jesus? Amen. And not someone else. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ this morning? Amen. We must be willing to follow. Amen. We can't be so puffed up. We can't be so high and mighty. We can't be so pious. Amen. That think people are, ought to follow us. Well, they ought to follow me, Deacon. I'm pretty. I'm fine. I'm good looking. I'm rich. I'm smart. <laughs> All right. All right. In, in God's eyes, you're nothing but filthy rags. If it had not been for the blood of Jesus Christ, <laughs> this morning, church, where would you be? See, we, we got to follow Jesus for the right reasons. Amen. We've got to know that God, our God, is a jealous God. And that he was not sharing his glory with anyone. Amen. See, if you want to sit on the throne, then God said, go ahead and do your thing. I'm going to step to the side. Amen. It was, a, what was it, a few weeks ago that Pastor Stoney preached about that we must humble ourselves in the sight of God. Am I talking to anybody in here this morning? We must humble ourselves in the sight of God. Follow him. Amen. Follow him. Amen. In this text this morning, as we look at it, Jesus said, if any man, and when we speak of man, amen, amen, we say man, woman, boy, girl. We say mankind. Any man come after me. Amen. But some of us, I find out, church, we're not going after Jesus. We want to go after the world. We want to go after the earthly pleasures. Amen. It, it, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, in my opinion. Uh, I want to satisfy myself. <laughs> it's me, my four, and no more. I don't care about anybody else. But you can't be a disciple of Christ and follow him in that manner. Amen. Uh, 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 Jesus told them, if you follow him, you must deny yourself. Amen. Why is it so hard for men to deny themselves? Amen. There's things that I've done in life. And I look back upon it and I said, I wish I had denied myself. I wish that I had went otherwhere yeah, yeah. and sought other things. Uh, uh, amen. The word of God is true. Yeah. Amen. And if we chase after worldly things and worldly pleasures, amen, the lust of the eye and the pride of flesh, amen, it puts us in competition with the most high God. Right. Come on, Come on now. 
And can you stand and go 12 rounds toe to toe with God? You cannot do it. For who can stand against an angry God? Amen. See, we have got to be about our father's business. Amen. Uh, 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 Wynn Parker, Brother Wynn Parker, you touched on it this morning. We all are called by God. Amen. You may not deacon on the deacon board. You might not usher on the usher board. You might not get up in the choir and sing like a bird. Amen. You might not stand in the pulpit and preach a word. You might not stand up and lead an eloquent prayer. But some of us, not some of us, all of us have been called by God. We all have a calling on our life. And we must find out and trust God and trust Jesus and the things that he done while he was on this earth. Amen. To follow that call. Am I preaching to anybody? We're called by God to follow him. Follow him, it says. That means to go after him, not before him. Amen? And in following people, amen, you never want to follow someone so close that you can't see God. You never want to follow someone or something so close that you can't see what's in front of that person. Amen. No, no pastor, no preacher, no man, no woman, no amount of money, no palatious homes or none of these things that you should follow that you cannot see God. Amen. Jesus is deemed to be worthy because of what he did on Calvary's cross. People always want to be followed, but like I said, they're not worthy to be followed. Amen? They're not worthy to be followed. And everybody that follows behind you are not necessarily with you. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Everybody that with you is not necessarily with you. Let me give you an example. I love to tell stories. Amen? I worked 10 years for the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office. Amen. And one night we had the uh, 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 duty, it was assigned to us to work the Star Spencer Douglas game. It was out at Star Spencer. And if you went to Douglas, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we forgive you. Uh, uh, um, but we worked that game. Amen. And we had got word that there was going to be high gang activity that night. Amen. Now, me and old guy, he still works uh, uh, for the sheriff's office, and he's a good friend of mine. Amen. And he's heard me tell this story once before. Amen. And, and, and I'm not going to call his name, for some of you may know him. Amen. But uh, 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 um, we were working. We worked patrol a lot and would ride a lot uh, uh, with each other uh, uh, on patrol. Amen. And we were in the game working. And, and, and we were trying to, you know, keep things uh, 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 under control. Keep things peaceful, if you would. Amen. And just as I seen, amen, some things and people and kids start getting agitated. Amen. And I, I leaned over to my partner and I told him, I said, whatever I do, back me up. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this church. I told him to back me up. And I couldn't have got no more than four or five steps. And all you know what broke loose. Amen. And red and blue bandanas are flying everywhere and pepper spray and bodies are flying everywhere. Amen. And when all the dust settled and when all it came to an end, amen, I look back and where is my partner? He's still standing on the wall just like this. Everybody that say they with you is not with you. Everybody that say that they don't follow you are not following you. Amen. They're not going to follow you. Amen. They follow Jesus for all various reasons. Do you hear what I'm saying, church? <laughs> Amen. They follow Jesus. As long as Jesus was, 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 was turning water into wine and healing folks, they followed him. Amen. Uh, it, it was all good. You know what I'm saying? Jesus stopped the processional of the widow Maine's uh, funeral, uh, uh, and he touched the buyer, and a dead boy got up, and it was all good. Amen. Uh, uh, he stopped by when Lazarus was dead and told Lazarus to come forth. And it was all good. Amen. A, a woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment and her bleeding stopped. And it was all good. Amen. When he was going to another city, uh, blind Bartimaeus was standing by the roadside. 
and he said, Dale, oh Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus healed him, and it was all good. Another man come up to Jesus, stumbling sick of palsy, saying, I have no one to drop me in the water. And Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk, and it was all good. Amen. But the closer he got to the car, to the cross. The 5,000 left him. His disciples left him. The woman with the issue of blood was nowhere to be seen. Blind Bartimaeus is nowhere to be found. And Jesus then goes to the cross. Help me, Lord. For now that the ground that I stand on is holy ground. Now he goes to the cross alone. But not before they beat him. Amen. They beat Jesus so bad. Amen. See, see, can I have just a minute, church? Can you give me just a minute? Amen. See, the cross, what the cross is to us is the same thing that the brazen altar was in the old temple, in the new and old temple. It is where the place where sin was dealt with. It's the place where sin is death with. I could stand up here from now until the end of eternity and preach on the cross and you still would not get the gist of what the cross meant. When they hung Jesus on the cross and they lifted him up, underneath him the ground shaking. I believe because it had never seen so much sin in one place. Who are you following this morning? Jesus showed us the way. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We must realize what he done on the cross. Amen. His blood that was shed on the cross. Amen. And how it said, what you say, Rev. Fartino, it has healing power. It has the power to make you follow. It has the power to make you good, amen? For as God, we stood in God's eyes, we were nothing but filthy rags, amen? But you have few people here and there and say, well, I'm righteous and I'm good. No, what you full of is something I can't say at church, amen? <laughs> but uh, what the blood does to us is make us righteous. Yeah. Yeah. It, the book says, the book says, it says, he who knew no sin, he became sin for us. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. That we might become the righteousness of God. That means that so Zeke Jackson, <laughs> who was, had lost his way, <laughs> who was out in a dying world, <laughs> who was sinking deep in sin, never to rise again. <laughs> Now he can go to the throne boldly and obtain mercy and find God in a time of need. Is there anybody in here that's been saved by the cross? Shout yes. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been saved by the cross. Pick up your cross. Pick up your cross and carry it. As the song said, must Jesus bear the cross alone? Come on, Sister Boston. And all the world go free? Uh-uh. We all have a cross. And I don't know this morning, church, what your cross is. Your cross may be your job. Your cross may be your health. Your cross may be your spouse. I don't know. But pick up that cross and follow Jesus this morning, church. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah. Amen this morning, church. Yeah. Pick up your cross and deny yourself. Amen. People always want to shoot their mouth off. Give me just a minute to show you this. In verse 23, 22, Peter, Jesus had told them, I'm going to be uh, crucified, I'm going to be uh, wrongly convicted and crucified and stuff like that. It's not going to be good. And Peter, who shot his mouth off all the time, you know why, church? Because Peter is us. We are Peter and Peter is us. Because we always shoot our mouth off sometimes at things we don't understand. And Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. 
for thou savest the things of the earth and of the world and not the things that of God. What are you following this morning? What are you going after this morning? What do you try to achieve this morning? If you're sitting here this morning with your Sunday best on, amen, that you put on your best suit, amen, you got your hat to match your belt, amen, you got your nice perks on, amen, you went to the mirror and looked at the mirror and gave your, your hair a final push and you came on to church. But what are you following? What are you running after this morning? Who are you following? Thank you, Reverend Burris. This morning, church, trials and tribulations come that might make us stronger. Amen. It comes, church. And I don't mean to sound insensitive. Amen. Because I have kin folk that are sick right now. Amen. But if you look at it, the whole of it. Amen. People are going to keep getting sick. People are going to keep dying. Amen. People are going to keep losing their minds. Amen. People are going to keep doing crazy things in this earth. Amen. So you might as well pick your cross up and follow Jesus now before things on this earth get too bad. Amen. See, there's going to come a time, amen, that, that, that the children of God, amen, that, that, that Jesus told us, amen, is going to get so bad on this earth, amen, that even that it may be even the very elect may not be saved if he tarries before he comes back. Amen? So that tells me, and that describes to me that we got some work to do. Amen? We, we got to be about our Father's business each and every day. Amen? We got to be about what he is about. It's not our own agenda. It's not about us. It's never about me. It's not about the, the, the preachers that stand in this pulpit. It's not about your money. It's not about your job. It's about the love of Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow him. Take it up. When you do this, it's an exercise. It's an exercise. Because faith without works is dead. I can't sit on my behind and not do nothing and expect God to have blessings for me. Amen. I can't sit on my behind and expect God just to shower me with salvation. Amen. I have got to get up and be about God's work. Amen. It's an exercise of grace. It's an exercise of zeal. It's an exercise of patience. It's an exercise of humility and self-denial. Amen. It is to discharge every duty, whether it be moral or be spiritual. In the thing that we call life. Life is hard, church. And it's going to get harder. Amen. No one said it was going to be easy. Amen. If Jesus himself said he must suffer many things. Amen. Then what makes us think that we ain't going to suffer Many things. <laughs> Young folk in here, don't think that you're not going to suffer. You might think that you're in your fabulous 20s right now, or you're your thrilling 30s, or your fine 40s, amen? And you might not think that you're going to suffer anything, amen? But I've been on this earth long enough to know that you will suffer some things. You're going to suffer some losses. You're going to have to stand by some hospital beds. Amen. You might have to go out to the funeral homes. Amen. You might stand at the gravesides. Amen. Some tears might roll down your eyes and shake hands up under your chin. Amen. But it's all right because God who sits in heaven's laboratory, he will take that tear and he will send it up to heaven and they'll analyze that tear and God knows what you have need of. Life gets hard. It's hard. Satan is a cheater. Satan is a cheater. Is anybody going to talk with me in the morning? Satan's a cheater. But Christ, Christ is a teacher. 
and life is the test. I have always said that the true measure, the true measure of a character, of your Christian character, is to put somebody in trials and tribulations. If we never faced anything, we wouldn't be able to go through anything. If we never faced anything, we never would be able to get to anything. If your destination is heaven above, then you got to go through some things down here on this earth. Take up your cross, church, and follow him. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Trials and tribulations come that we might be stronger. Amen. Jesus said, endure these things. Amen. Endure these things. Amen. Run the race that's set before you with all diligence. That don't get it twisted as Pastor Co- Scobie might say. Diligence means with hard work. Amen. It's hard being a Christian today. It's hard being a child of God today. It's hard being a follower of Christ today. Amen. Because you have so many people tugging on you here and tugging on you there. Amen. See, your enemies, do you know your enemies this morning, in church? The world, the flesh, and the devil are out to get you. Amen. They're out to get you. And they won't stop till they destroy you. The devil knows what he's supposed to do. And he's good at doing what he's supposed to do. So that means we got to be better. Well, it's story time. I told you I love story. But you'll like this story too, church. See, that was this old farmer. And his name was John. See, I'm going somewhere with this, church. All right. Amen. You right. <laughs> see, John used to love to take that old mule out <laughs> and plow the field. <laughs> and he was singing hymns. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. He was singing as he plowed that field. <laughs> but his fate would have it one day. <laughs> that animal that he loved so much <laughs> fell into a hole. <laughs> it fell into a hole. <laughs> and John, old farmer John. He got distressed. He got upset. He started, oh, my favorite animal, my friend, my mule has fallen into a hole. And the mule began to cry and whine and bay as an animal that's under distress would do. Hearing this from around, his neighbors and friends came running to see what was old John doing and what was happening at his farm. Amen. And he says, my mule has fallen where I'm going with this church. Amen. And they said, well, let us try to get this animal up out of this hole. And they fastened straps around this animal. And they began to pull and yank to get this beast of burden out of this hole. But they could not, for he weighed too much. They kept on pulling, but he would not come. John said, oh me, oh my, what am I going to do? Well, one of the neighbors standing by there suggested, they said, well, let's put him out of his misery. Let's cover him up with dirt so we don't have to hear him scream and hear him holler. And this really stressed old John out. John was stressed as they didn't got shovels and rakes and begin to dump dirt in this hole on this animal. The more dirt they poured in on this animal, the more he would cry. Sometimes, church, it's all right to cry out to God. Lord, have mercy on me. But as fate would have it, a miraculous thing happened that day when they start dumping that dirt in that hole. That mule would take one step up on that dirt. They kept dumping shovel full after shovel full of dirt and that mule would step up. They got to the point where the dirt was high enough in the hole. <laughs> yeah, they was high enough in the hole that that mule stepped right up out of that hole and came out. See, what I'm trying to tell you, church, is the devil's trying to cover you up. He's trying to put you in a hole. He's trying to dump dirt on you. He's trying to destroy your 
your, your, your testimony. He's trying to destroy your faith. He's trying to get you not to follow Christ. But what you got to do is keep stepping up. Step up. Step up. Got bad news at the doctor. Step up. They said it was cancer. Step up. Oh, I got away with loved one. Step up. Don't know what I'm going to do. Step up. Don't know how I'm going to make it. Step up. Don't know if it's enough money to pay the bills. Step up. They getting ready to turn the lights off. Step up. They getting ready to repossess the car. Step up until you step up out of that hole and follow Jesus. Oh, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. This morning. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. There's a second part of this scripture. For it says, whosoever will save their life shall lose it. We're trying detox, botox, and plastic surgery, and all kind of things to preserve our life. Trying to preserve our lives by working overtime, double time, and triple time so that we have money to buy material things. But let me tell you, church. Oh, like the Bible said, the man who stored up goods, he stored it up and he built bigger and better barns that he might store up these things. And he said, I have stored up enough for a lifetime. Now I will sit back and take my rest. But oh, God has some news for him. <laughs> he said, this night, you fool, your soul is required of you. In all my 56 years of being on this planet, I've never seen a U-Haul. I've never seen trailers going out to Trite Hill or Hillcrest with somebody's stuff that they can dump in that hole. You know what I'm saying? Give it all over to God. What should a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you trying to profit this morning? All everything that's in the world, all this resources, all this minerals, all this gold, all this diamonds, all this jewelry, all this money. Are you trying to gain that? What God said, none of that mounts to a hill of beans to him. What's worth something? Fartino is the soul, the soul, the most prized possession that a man has. I have a lot of things. I live in a big house and I drive a nice car. Well, what you have, that doesn't amount to a hill of beans. It's not worth dung. You know what dung is, don't you, Deacon? Dung is that stuff that comes out of the back end of a baby into a diaper. That's what dung, and that's what all those materials material possessions mean. Amen. If you're giving all those things in exchange for your soul, you don't have nothing. 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 What should you give, church, in exchange for your soul? Follow Christ. Follow Christ. Follow Christ this morning, church. I'm going to tell you this, and then I'm going to take my seat. I'm going to take my seat. See, if I live my life as if there is no God, yeah. no, Jesus, no Jesus, no heaven, no hell, only to get to the end of that life and find out there's not what have I lost. Absolutely nothing. But if I live my life as if there's no God, no Jesus, no heaven, no hell, to get to the end of that life and find out it is. What have I lost? <laughs> I've lost everything. <laughs> I've lost eternal life. <laughs> I've lost salvation. <laughs> I've lost uh, heaven. <laughs> I've lost being able to see my loved ones that have gone on before me. I've lost everything, church. <laughs> Don't lose everything. <laughs> Don't gamble with your soul this morning. Don't gamble with your soul this morning. 
follow Jesus. Go where he goes. Do what he does. Talk as he talk. Act as he acted. And think as he think. Let this mind be in you as it is in Christ Jesus. And everything will be all right. I hope and I pray that these few words find you well this morning.